So uh, we're going to do a little bit of a recap on all the different features of the robot that we've uh, been able to come up with over the three days here uh, at Michigan Tech's RI3D. So to start off, um, we've got this elevator system, and that's powered by two Neo motors, and uh, it's chain driven, and they're linked together uh, so that they drive up and down at the same time. Uh, and then this allows us to move our arm mechanism up and down. So on this elevator is this arm mechanism, which swings up to be able to move the game piece uh, from the uh, human player pickup zone to uh, the reef. And so um, we needed to have the elevator because even if we just had the pivot, we wouldn't be able to uh, get the coral on the lower uh, reef level, I guess. So we decided that having this elevator in here would assist in that. The elevator also assisted when we found out that the arm that we created wasn't able to remove the algae from the reef. Um, we found that out yesterday, and that was the plan was to use uh, the arm to remove it. So we had to add this thing over here that we call the flippy doodah. Um, it's basically just a motor on a like motor on a stick. It just swings out and will contact the algae, and we run the motor and it will pull it off the um, off the reef. So, and that kind of leads uh, also to you know game piece manipulation, and uh, it, we can see how the robot handles up, uh, interacting with the game piece. So, this right here is our um intake it's basically just a couple of wheels that spin to suck in the the pipe so once the pipe is then on the robot the the coral that is um then this arm can swing back around to score it on the specific uh scoring uh spot but if we wanted to go level one uh this would be an unoptimal way for us to score the coral so we added this pivot here, which will pivot the coral off to the side. Uh, and then we can place it down nicely on level one so that we could maybe stack a few more up there if we ever do decide to place them there. So, yeah, I think that's, I think that's just about it. I mean, we have a couple of other really awesome features on the robot, um, such as these... Uh, uh, we were going to integrate these distance sensors um, as well as the uh, gyro, uh, courtesy of a redo robotics. Um, and then, oh, yeah, we also have, you know, another thing. I'm just kind of spitballing here with things we're to bring up. But we've got uh, these limit switches at the top and bottom of the lift that are wired into the sparks. So if the lift is at the top or bottom of its range of motion, these will trip and we won't overrun our hard limits because we found out that doing that causes the robot to completely like break. The elevator breaks and the chain pops off and that's not good. So we put these limit switches on to prevent that. Um, yeah, I mean, other than that, I could talk about a couple of the things we struggled with and the things that went well uh, for, over the course of the project. Um, I'd say one of the things that uh, went well was uh, you know our prototyping that led to this design right we prototyped this intake mechanism uh, on day one found out that it was incredibly effective and then um, figured out other ways that we could integrate it into the robot and th that turned out really well um, I think the whole overall design process mechanically was very good um, another and one of the places that we encountered some difficulties actually was with the uh, the motor controllers the spark maxes they were having uh, firmware issues, we found out um, and uh, consulted with people online, and they were having similar issues that was solved by reverting everything to the 2024 version of the firmware. So then we had to revert everything to the 2024 version of the firmware. So the Rio, uh, all the code, all the libraries are all running uh, a rolled back version um, so that we could get those Spark Maxes working because before that we had a CAN issue um, where if you had more than two sparks on the CAN bus, they wouldn't be able to identify themselves. Uh, and obviously we have way more than that. So, um, yeah, those are just a couple of things. Um, 
I don't think there's much else to say right now. We'll probably make a uh, another video uh, with it moving around and scoring at different positions, as well as a full-on reveal video uh, in a couple weeks. But this is our 72-hour post robot in three days uh, design and just overall update. So yeah, thanks everybody for watching and keeping track with uh, robot in three days at Michigan Tech. Uh, we all appreciate everybody who's tuned in and followed us on this journey because this has been, I would say, uh, really incredible doing robot in three days for the first time. Um, and we have something to show for it. So thank you, everybody. And thank you to our sponsors as well. Uh, we are sponsored by uh, MTU's College of Engineering, Computing, uh, College of Computing, uh, Copes Automation, Superior Cutting Services, Redo Robotics, the Alley Makerspace, and Preferred Manufacturing. I think that's it.